Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop. We're going to be working on the record today. We're going to be installing these Adams drive shafts and doing a couple of other things. So the first thing we've got to do, we've got to get the hood off, the steering column disconnected, and the cab up in the air. So we're designing this so that the cab comes off relatively easily. It's still not going to be like changing a tire, but it'll come off relatively easily. Okay, we're ready to lift this cab off. All right, so you'll remember that we welded those in. Some of you will remember that you welded those in. What we got in today. What did we get today? Hey. Those look good. You can get these at matsoffroadrecovery.com, right? Are these in stock? Yes. Oh, this is a finished product. So these are an improvement over the tumbler. Tumblers I was spilling. These ones. These are trail ready. Oh, these are trail rated? Ready. These are trail ready. These are trail ready. ready. Thanks, Shani. You're welcome. So yeah, so the cab comes off really easy. We've got those there, and we got these here. Stop. No pressure on that one, nice. I'm not pleased. We're gonna have to cut some holes in the floor and put access panels. That's no good. Okay, let's see if this gets it. We've got to come up with a better way. That did not go well at all. Not cool. We did it with a good, positive attitude. We have got to re redesign some things. Getting to this middle mount is no small feat. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to replace these weak, flimsy little tools, whatever they're called, the, the cab lifting tools, the cab lifting bars. Anyway, we're going to upgrade them to some solid bar stock so that we don't have problems with them bending. They're just a little bit flimsy. We're going to do that really fast before we start working under it. Okay. All right, so now that we got the cab secured with the stronger solid bars, look at these things. There's the difference. So I feel a lot better about that. And you should too. And so should she. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what we got here. So Adams was here a couple days ago. They measured this all up, they engineered it, and then they sent them out like overnight, overnighted them to us. So big thanks to those guys. They got these out here. We're gonna be putting these on. I've been running Adams drive shafts on the banana and the Morvair for years. I haven't had any problems with them. So this is complete beef right here. So you'll notice this one's a smaller diameter, super thick wall tubing. Has to be small because it's in a tight space. This is the mid shaft and this is the front drive shaft. This is the back. There's a couple things we've got to do. We've always been planning on cutting the skid plate for clearance. We're gonna kind of see where that is. Lizzie, do you want to set the plasma cutter up? So what I'm doing here is I'm taking this piece of aluminum tubing and I'm just kind of putting it in the center of that flange and the center of this one and looking to see where there's going to be interference and then I'm going to cut it out. <laughs> so right here I drew two parallel lines semi-parallel I'm going to cut those out. Lizzie will you get me a rag? It's all over this. What is this? What kind of caustic juice is this? Did we have some kind of a fire in here? This is it's Fire extinguisher. Oh, uh, yeah. When Trevor was redoing gas stuff, some gas leaked, and I was welding right here, and there's a little fire, but we put it out. Hmm. Along with Adams overnighting his stuff so that we could get this ready for SEMA, um, Neil from Western Canadian Rockwell sent these adapters overnight, and uh, that was awesome. Some really, really neat people in this off-road community. Okay, Lizzie, you think you can snake that drive shaft in here? Goes this way? Yep. Okay. Okay, can you get me those bolts? Hey, Peanut. Hey, did you come for a love? We'll cuddle later. I said we'll cuddle later. 
All right, this will be SEMA tight. That's good enough for me. So Midnight Metalworks got us the shift rails and stuff. This is a prototype, like this is a new, a brand new box. And so they were still building it after I got it. <laughs> There's no guts in this transmission anyway. That's just a placeholder. We'll be revisiting all of this in the future, but I'm not going to see it with Bluetooth drive shafts because I saw a meme about it once and I'm like, boy, I'd sure hate to be that guy. <laughs> Roasted. This is a tight fit. Okay. So the next step, I've got to figure out where this carrier bearing mounts and how we're going to mount it and the clearance that we need, whether, you know, I, I don't know. We just got to figure it out. Cutting new grass here. I've never been right here before. The problem is, is that, that is touching the starter. So I'd like to get it as low as possible. All right, we got the drive shafts in. I think I figured out how I'm gonna mount this carrier bearing and how all that's gonna go. I called Jim at Interwest Rebuilders. He's gonna get me a starter that gives me more clearance for the drive shaft. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna pick that up tomorrow. And then look who walked in. Hi. Haven't seen her for like. Forever. So Holly's just inspecting her work here, Lizzie. What do you think? What do you think, Holly? You think I that's think gonna work? It is looking really, really good. You guys have really done a lot in a short amount of time. Cause this thing's massive. <laughs> this is looking really good. Being, looking at a lot of the welds. They're beautiful. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. All right, we're gonna be back tomorrow like this. And we're back, just like I said. Guess what day it is? It's new hat day. This one's getting a little grimy. I stayed here last night and finished hooking up this carrier bearing, like mounting it. So there was no one here to film it. So you just have to believe me by looking at it. <laughs> As we suspected, the starter's not gonna fit. There's an interference problem right here with the carrier bearing, it's just not gonna fit. I talked to my buddies over at Interwest and they said that they got one that will, that this is clocked up higher and it will work perfectly. It's only hitting by like a quarter inch. So it's not gonna take much. We're gonna be picking that up later today. What are we working on today, Lizzie? Are we putting the cab back on? We are putting the cab back on. What's I'm the make step before that? I don't know. So Lizzie, the first thing I'm gonna want you to do this morning is weld these up. Okay. So we've drilled these holes just to give us a little bit of extra plug weld from here to here. I think it's worthwhile, it might not be. We really struggled to get these bolts out and I'm going to do something different that is going to be fine. I'm going to go from a 9 16th bolt, which is actually what these holes are. I'm going to go to a half inch bolt. That's going to make the cab sit down, you know, whatever, a 30 second lower. So I'm going to adjust these out one turn, put them together with half inch bolts and maybe, just maybe, it won't be such a battle. I'm sad at how hard that was to take apart, but we're learning. We're going to get a process here. Okay. Let's go a half a turn. Yeah, I guess let's check it. Check it with half a turn. We've got to get these all perfectly lined up. Less perfectly now that we're using a sloppier bolt. Let's see, pretend to screw it in, which screws it out. Well, I'm hoping that is good enough. All right, those look good. I'm happy with that. I think the next thing is to set the cab back down. Wish us luck. Nice and slow, just let her on down. You're doing great. I think this needs to come this way. Keep going. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's put everything up for a second. Uh. And let's do the next thing. What is the next thing? So Matt sent Tucker and I on an errand to go pick up the starter at Interwest. So we're headed to St. George to go do that. I also got a Jolly Rancher sucker and it's kind of delicious. What about you? Water. Just what? That is boring. <laughs> Here we are, pulling into Interwest. Let's go get the starter. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. We got the starter. Look at this thing. Looks awesome. And we are back to the shop in the nasty wind with the starter. Is that one gonna work? Your starter. You even come with new bolts? Starter, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. It'll run now. Mm -hmm. This thing's tiny. Yeah, it is. I was 
noticing that. Well, we got this little guy put on there. So now, when you open these, you don't have to worry about shoving the front of the hood over, over it, just opens. Now we've got to come up with some kind of a hood latch so that we can take this on the freeway on the trailer without the hood doing exactly what it's doing right now. We interrupt this wrecker build for a job. Right, that recovery took the rest of the day, so it's a whole new day. What are we working on today, Lizzie? Uh, we got these just tacked up yesterday. They are to go on the exhaust right before the mufflers, so I'm gonna finish welding these up and you're gonna work on the seats, right? Speaking of the mufflers, so we get comments all the time about how good the Morvair sounds and lots of questions. What mufflers are you running? Well, we're gonna be doing the exact same exhaust on the heavy record. Oh, let me tell you. It sounds just as good in real life as it does on the videos. There's no drone, there's no drumming or raspiness. It's just really like a really low tone, really mellow. And this is what we're using. These are Flowmaster, these are the HP2s. HP stands for hush power. Flowmaster calls these their laminar flow mufflers. I think that's a really fancy word to say a glass pack with some baffles in it. <laughs> but they sound amazing. Would you like a demonstration? You could be an opera singer with Holly. Could I? <laughs> Holly, could I be an opera singer? No. So the problem is the way the exhaust pipe is, it's too close to the frame and too close to the, the skid plate just to slip these on. So Lizzie's gonna be building these and these will just jog it out just enough. So I just found out that we've got Randy from Challenger Lift stopping by. So Lizzie, hold the phone on that. I'm holding the phone. Yeah. Randy! Hey! I don't know if he's here. No! I've heard of you. Everybody. So we're going to be working with Challenger lifts moving forward. Okay. I'm excited. So we're just going to go over some of that. It's going to be boring, but it's going to be exciting when we get the lift in here. That's the one we're getting. Appreciate you coming by. No problem. Happy to be here. So Lizzie got this welded up. It looks fantastic. We've made, we've made this exhaust a couple times. I don't want to hear it. It's going to work for now. Oh, I talked to LT last night and he offered to come down and weld up a complete uh, stainless steel exhaust system for this, headers and everything. So I took him up on that offer, but that's not going to happen now. We've got to get this thing to SEMA and it's going tomorrow. So SEMA quality. We've got the exhaust on, that's gonna be functional until LT builds this brand new stainless steel system with a TIG welder. I want a TIG weld. Okay, you'll be working with LT on that and TomTom. Tom. So it'll be a big collaboration of building the world's best sounding exhaust on the world's largest off-road wrecker. All right, next, we're gonna to go to lunch, but when we get back, we're gonna be mounting the PRP seats in their permanent location, in their home forever, in the cab of this truck. So I got these cut at the tape, uh, you know, cut them at an angle here so that they're sitting level. And now Lizzie's gonna tack them in, then we're gonna take the seats out and bomb these in and go from there. All right, so while she's doing that, we're gonna install this starter. It's much smaller. Man, that drive shaft is made. I'm changing the starter a little more. Okay, are we ready to mount these seats? All right, jump into that seat and see how it feels. Great. Oh, that's back where we are. Like right there. There we go. Okay, let's get the other one in. 
All right, what's next? So we've got almost everything crossed off the list. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, we are going to load this up and we are gonna go weigh it. We're gonna see how much it weighs. Step one is to go weigh the truck and trailer empty. I've always gone in to see if we could weigh first and then they always told me that I was an idiot. So I'm just gonna go weigh myself. Come on. I need to weigh a truck that's going to be on that trailer, so... Wait, you need it weighed empty and then go pick it and up? And then I'll go pick it up. Not a problem. Be ready for you when you get back. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm estimating that the wrecker weighs 9,950 pounds. Lizzie, what do you got? 9,925. I should have let you guess first. Why? Tucker, what do you got? Uh, ten and a quarter. I'll go high. Okay. okay. Ten, so, ten thousand two hundred fifty pounds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me leave you right there. You've got a precious load to secure. Maybe you've got the world's largest off-road wrecker you're hauling around. Whatever it is, mat straps. You can go to mattsoffroadrecovery.com, get your own set. That's not going anywhere. really nice. It's pretty nice. Thank you. You don't need to do that. I know. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You have a great evening. Thanks for waiting for us. All right, so we have the weight now. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm going to let you guess. The first person to guess the correct weight of the heavy wrecker, we're going to send you a hoodie. Matt's off for recovery hoodie. So just type in what you're thinking. Good luck and good guessing. Well, we made our deadline. We are going to make it to SEMA. Ed's Golden Nugget's going to be at SEMA. We're going to be there with this. You can come check us out if you want to, but we're going to be filming it and we're going to show you those that can't. It's going to be a great time. Thanks for watching. <coughs> <coughs> Why am I still doing that? I don't know. <coughs>